All right, so this is the B660 Iris Master, the DDR4 motherboard. And I'm gonna be using it, of course, for a DDR4 build. Since this is a semi-budget motherboard. I know there are some uh, B660 motherboards that cost closer to $100, something like this one that costs like a, around 160. And uh, let me quickly open this. Oh, this is, there's some really strong plastic smell on this thing. But anyways, this is the motherboard and I'm probably just gonna place it on top of the case because it's gonna be less that wait, wait, actually, is there anything else under the case? Oh wait, there is. There is more stuff in the case. So, take off the box. You get this, the RS logo that you can put on your case. 3M tape, you know, so well, it's gonna be pretty good. And here's the menu. Yeah, uh, and here are the connections that it comes with. This is just a box. All right, so you got some SATA 3, and this one is bented, as you can see, bent at a 90 degree angle. Uh, this looks like to be a speaker. And let's see what's over here. This seems to be a single screw. Um, I think this these might be. These screws might be for the M.2 drives or NVMe drives that you can place inside the motherboard. They're really small. I doubt these are to hold the motherboard in place. Uh, what is in here? Oh, okay, so this this is for the Wi-Fi. This is the antenna, wireless antenna that it comes with. It's supposed to do Wi-Fi 6, I believe. But we're gonna be opening up that later on in the video. Let's get this case out of the way. What we have here is some four DDR4 slots. So even though DDR5 is the has the exact same number of pins, the notch on DDR5 is more towards the middle, so it is it's not going to be compatible. And here we got that 1700 socket, which is able to support uh, 12 and 13 generation. So you can either put in a CPU like this one, the i3 12100F, or this CPU that. Uh, 13700 KF so it supports two generations uh, you can get the well of course since uh, the 13th gen came out recently you can need to go to the to the manufacturer's website and from them get the BIOS update for the motherboard all right so here you got the CMOS battery now this PCIe is actually gen 4 and one of these is gen 4 and the other one is gen 3 we got a 24 pin a motherboard connection for power. Let's see here, these are some big heat sinks right here. It's, uh, for SATA connections, you know, so that you can plug in your SATA drives. No SSDs, most likely. So, you know, nobody uses big drives anymore. All right, so let me take apart this and let's see how many MPMEs you can actually place in here. Right, so this is a, a nice heat sink right here. Well, wow, look, it comes with uh, some thermal pads already pre installed. This feels like a pure aluminum block. All right, so you can put two NVMe, uh, not NVMe, uh, yeah, NVMe's or M.2 drives. I'm going to probably speed this thing up. And this one has one underneath. That's not how I, of course I opened it wrong. But yeah, so you can put in uh, three MVMEs on this motherboard. Here's some plastic that you can remove. I don't know if this lights up or I know that this definitely lights up. I'm not sure if this lights up. I'm hoping it does because, you know, It'll give you that extra FPS, you know, if you decide to game on this thing. I mean, this is for gaming. But either way, 
I'm just reviewing the basics of it, you know, like what most people really care about. So the CPU I'm gonna be putting in here is this monster of a CPU that you see right here. So this is the 12100F. I don't see the arrow, I'm blind. No, here's the arrow right here. I hate how much this thing presses it down. It feels like I'm gonna break it. Gives me anxiety. So we're gonna be using the 1200F right here. We're gonna be using uh, this ballistic RAM. Uh, these are two eight gig sticks and these are running at 3200 mega transfers. All right, so let's put these in. Now I do have another build with DDR5 and that is where that i7 is gonna be going. This is gonna be build for someone who uses their computer to, to you know pay bills so it's gonna be interesting how they use something that can not only be used for office work but for casual gaming all right and uh, finalize things what we have here is this Kingston NVMe drive so yeah I'm gonna be putting in this Kingston NVMe drive in here as you can see, it's only 500 gigs. Well, let me just take this off. Oh man, making it's not looking good. This is not looking very good at all. There we go. Now we take uh, one of the ones that one of the screws that came inside this bag. We got one of these little screws. All right, so take this off. All right, so. Uh, still got two more of these screws and since we got two more I'm just gonna put them in because knowing me I'm probably gonna lose them that way if I ever need to add uh, four terabytes of NVMe storage this is a great uh, motherboard because it has one of these slots it can hold multiple MV uh, M.2 drives and what's it called and uh, since it has one of these you can easily put in one of the next in cards that's gonna come out well, that already came out for NVIDIA, that is. But that thing, uh, looks like you're gonna have to sell your kidney to be able to afford it. It's extremely expensive, 10 times the amount of this motherboard. Oh, and what I'm using right here is actually just a regular uh, a Phillips head screwdriver for all this. You don't need any, any uh, like hex bits or any security bits, you know. This is not Apple or HP. You know, if you ever try getting into one of the laptops, you know, it's a complete pain. And of course, since uh, this is, this CPU is one of the F CPUs, it does not have any integrated graphics. So I'm gonna be putting in this old graphics card in here, which is a GTX 1070. This should be enough for anything that they might throw at it, I believe. Something that's worrying is that I don't see anything with, bio, with the BIOS in here. This all feels cool and nice actually to the touch. This one right here, just, this is all aluminum, just different color. Feels nice. Let me bring this in closer. This one definitely has a lot less plastic than that set uh, 690 classified that I unboxed a couple of months ago. Much less plastic, you know, not killing the environment. So the other one, Oh, but this one does weigh a bit less. Oh, here's what the back of the motherboard looks like. You can see the RAM slots right here. This is the PCIe Gen 5. It's a socket. And here's the power for the CPU. You see it uses one 4-pin and one 8-pin connection. Back of the motherboard, as you can see. 
It has uh, four USB-A right here. These look to be USB-A 2.0. These are for 3.0 from the looks of it. You got your display port, HDMI, and this is USB 3.0 second gen, USB type C uh, second gen, on those USB type C uh, 3.2, and you got your 2.5 gig gigabit connection right here. And then you got your uh, audio ports right there. And this is gonna be, of course, for the antenna. All right, let's see here. What else? So we're gonna be connecting the fans up here in the front. And down here you can see there's more connections for fans right here. These are all fan connections. This is to control LEDs down here. I don't know if my camera can capture that well. I'm still using my smartphone to record my videos. But yeah, I'm also using this cooler on this uh, CPU. You're gonna remember this from one of my previous videos. Uh, I'm still gonna put it in this new motherboard. And of course, as you can see, it easily fits in. Time for everyone's favorite part, applying the thermal paste. I'm gonna apply it right now, but you're not gonna see any of it because I'm gonna cut it out. I don't want, you know, a man does not want to be judged by the way they apply thermal paste on their CPU. And there you have it. So this is the final build. Uh, this cooler should be able to keep it between 31 and 35 degrees Celsius. Well, uh, idle. Yeah. So this is the power supply I'm gonna be using for this build. As you can see, it's a 650 watt power supply from EVGA. All right, and this is 30 seconds of me struggling to place the CPU inside the case. And I didn't include the part where uh, I, I connected the, all the connections, you know, like the graphics card, 24 pin connection, the, the 8 pin and 4 pin connection for the uh, motherboard, for, I mean for the CPU, because I did not record it. Alright, as you can see, this is what the finished PC looks like. It's cooler, the graphics card, uh, and the RAM, I see turn it on. Everything should be working. I believe that the NVMe that I installed in there has Windows 10 Pro already running in it. But some drivers might be different, so we're gonna uh, change that up a bit. As the PC boots up, you can tell that, you know, we're gonna get max FPS from this build. I mean, look at all those RGBs and the CPU fan hasn't even turned on yet. Oh, now it did. But yeah, look at all that FPS you're going to be getting. Oh, nice. It works, actually. See, I was did not doubt myself at all. Look at this PC. Each of these fans give you at least... You got like 30 FPS right there, just from the RGB. Of course, my mouse and keyboard. Oh, I can't connect to the Wi-Fi since I do not have any drivers. Well, either way, I'm just gonna reset this PC and then I'm gonna go get the drivers uh, for this machine. If you can't find something, you can always search for it. In order to get the drivers for the motherboard, you need to go to the Gigabyte website, and this is the motherboard that I have. I'm just gonna update. I'm just gonna download the latest version of each of, of the of the drivers. So I downloaded all the files into a USB drive so that I was so that I'm able to install it on the new PC. And right now I'm extracting it so that I can install everything and I'm able to actually get Wi-Fi so I can get all the updates and and the PC ready.
And now I can do some Windows updates. And that's going to be set. To get into the BIOS, you want to press the delete key. While this is booting up, if you press the delete key, the BIOS is going to appear. And from here, you can actually switch the memory configuration, like the speed, by clicking on this. And do not click just uh, escape to exit out of this. You actually have to go over here and click save and exit. Otherwise, it's not going to save the memory, uh, what's it called, configuration. It tells you the frequency, the temperature right now. You can see the temperature for the CPU is actually pretty good considering that I have it under a table. It does look pretty nice though. But yeah, you just uh, double click on here. Disable, enable, and that's it. And then after that's done, you just press save and exit. Oh, and if you are wondering why my delete key is here, it's because this is a left-handed keyboard. I am not left-handed. Yeah, it, uh, the lead key is going to be in the other side, typically. And from the task manager here, you can see that it is running at the correct speed now. It was previously running at 2100. But yeah, you can see here. And Anyways, that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And have a great day.